Welcome to episode 45 already of the We Are Auto Show. What's new, Mr. Derek Schmidt? Mr. Michael Rowell, did you hear about the rumble in the jungle? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I got to run you through something real fast. Okay. There was a launch of a rocket down in French Guiana, Peru, uh, and it was a big NASA satellite called the James Webb Space Telescope. Have you heard of it? I've heard of the. I've heard of Oliver Webb, the race car driver. No, no, no. So James Webb is some dude at NASA that did very good things. I don't remember off the top of my head what he did. Anyway, NASA has been building this telescope since the 90s. It was originally slated to launch in 2008, and it launched last, I think, two weeks ago now. So, hold on. 2008 to 2022? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I think they're a little behind schedule here. Yeah. Not only that, it was originally slated to be, uh, like... Nine hundred million dollars. It was ten billion dollars to build. <laughs> ten billion. If that's not government work, I don't know what is. That is the epitome of government work. Yes, it, government work. Let's delay this by like twelve years, fourteen years, and let's add tack on an extra ten billion dollars. Yeah, it. no, it, like yeah, it's it's bad. <clears throat> anyway, it did launch. And thank God it launched successfully, because had this not launched successfully, it would have been NASA's biggest blunder since a human died on the space shuttle. Yikes. Yeah. Um, but it did launch. And let's check out a couple of photos of it, because it's actually a really unique and interesting thing that I want to talk about. Okay. So this is the James Webb. This is actually it all folded up. It is a space telescope. Have you ever seen the Hubble Space Telescope? It's like this tube that takes in light. You know what like a normal telescope looks like? It's a tube that takes in light I and hits a mirror. It, yeah. And yeah, it yeah. does that kind of stuff. So this one is uh, kind of does like this origami stuff to fold up. And you can see those yellow sections are actually its mirror. And then it's got like that really silvery stuff like right in front of its mirror. That's actually like a sun shield. So hmm. this telescope needs to be very, very cold because it's going to look at infrared light. And infrared is just heat. Yeah. Right? So it's going to look at infrared light, whereas the Hubble Space Telescope looked at visible light which we can see with our eyes, but we can't see infrared oh, with our eyes. Oh, okay. So in order to see the infrared light, they need to make it really, really cold. So they actually have like five layers of like this metallic reflective stuff that will keep it super cold. So like the bottom layer that's facing the sun will be something like 120 or 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, wow. While the layer closest to the actual top of the telescope where that mm -hmm. mirror is, is minus 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Holy crap. Yeah. It's cold enough to like liquefy the air that we breathe. That would chill. That would, yes. that would chill my whiskey. Yes. I think. So it's super super cool telescope. Um, there is another photo here. This is it all unfolded. That reminds me of Star Wars. It kind of does look like Star Wars, but you can definitely see like the sun shield, right, the bottom part, mm -hmm. and you can see those layers that that has those five different yep. layers. I can you can see, see the giant mirror that they have. This mirror is something like five times bigger than the Hubble mirror, which means it'll get like five times the light. Right. Wow. It'll be way better at viewing stuff. And this is supposed to be able to look all the way back to essentially the first stars that are ever made. Whoa. Yeah, 13 billion years ago. What? So as you look at a star out in the distance, yeah. you're looking back in time. Okay, fair. Yeah. Because that's when <clears throat> the light was emitted from the star okay. that far away in light years, right? Okay, yeah, I get that. And since this is going to be an infrared, it actually... the the universe is expanding in all directions at all times. Mm -hmm. Weird thing to think, but that's just how it works. At least yep. that's how we can tell it works. So that means that the light is actually being elongated as it travels to us. And that elongation is turning it into more of the infrared spectrum as opposed to visible light. So, so it's being what's called red shifted. It's got to be going very fast then. Uh, I mean, light travels at a constant. Yes. Yes. So, but as space is expanding, it's actually like making it harder for the light to get here. And it's, it's also expanding the light. So it's red shifting the light. Anyway, long story short, this will be able to look back further than the Hubble, and it will be able to look back basically to the very first stars that formed in the solar system. That's pretty cool. In our, in our whole universe. That's pretty really cool. Really neat. Really, really cool. That's pretty cool. And they successfully launched uh, two weeks ago, I believe, today, and they just unfurled the the uh, all the sun shield stuff. is all, all set, all good, and so did that big boom arm that was right in front of the mirror. That came down today, and it's all set, too. Oh, dang. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool stuff. So maybe we'll look back to a an ancient car and another <laughs> star somewhere on a planet. Maybe. This does have a good chance to find life if there is life out there. If. You know there's life out there. The it probability that there's there not is... Yeah. Odds are there is. Of course. Yes. And I want to know what cars they drive. I, if they have cars. And I want to know about them. 
I mean, yeah, but think about like the amount of time that humans have had cars. Yeah, but in the amount of time that humans. Yeah, have but existed. how how does that mean that someone in this other planet may have not created a car as well? Oh, I'm sure they have, but what if they're like way past cars to like? Yeah, what if they're just now getting to cars? But what are the odds of that? Well, I don't know. We'll it took us out. 13 billion years to get to cars, and it only we've only been in cars for what like 150 years or so. Like that's a really small time period in the 13 billion year time. Frame. Well, we're gonna find out. <laughs> And I all look right, forward to maybe. see all the internal combustion engines that are on the random little star in the <laughs> galaxy far, far away. Do you think they'll have spent 100 years on the internal combustion engine? Or did they just go straight to EV? I will find a way to teleport there. If okay, they have all right, those. all right. We got to move on. Yes, please, let's move on. Is there any news to chat about? There is some news. Some news. Is, this week, you have told me, is something called CES. CES some sort of consumer electric something or another. Yes. Which means like all the auto related news this week is centered around CES. It is. And all the manufacturers that are putting new stuff out for the CES, the people that like keyboards and computers and things that mm -hmm. I don't understand. So a lot of it's like EV related, which is kind of a bummer for me, but I'm sure you're rejoicing. And Fantastic. Jumping, yeah, jumping for joy. So the first bit of news is the new Chevy Silverado EV electric vehicle. Okay. Tell me more. Do I have to? Yes. <laughs> so I don't know tons about it, but obviously we knew Chevy was going to be doing a, a competitor to the Ford Lightning, right? We knew yep. they were going to do the Silverado 1500 like the Lightning. Mm -hmm. um, so they've officially released the, the look of it and some estimated numbers. Ooh. Wait, before we get into the numbers, let's, let's, let's look. What do you think about the look? It doesn't look bad. I don't like the it has the front of it not bad but i don't like the way they extended the cab over the bed like that that little yeah. angular that reminds me of a honda ridgeline and it, I don't that's like what i that. was gonna say it reminds me of a ridgeline i don't like that i don't part. like that either the from the front doors forwards right not bad or like the avalanche maybe it reminds me cross an avalanche and a ridgeline yeah. together and you have the new silverado ev is right. what it looks like in my opinion hmm yeah i is it good in terms of looks? From the front? Yeah. Yes. From yeah. the front? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. From the back? Not particularly, no. No. <laughs> maybe, the back, it looks horrible. Maybe they're doing that for aerodynamic purposes. I don't know, but it just, yeah. It's funny you mention aerodynamic purposes. Okay. Because they, this new Silverado is touting a kind of a best in class of something in terms of aerodynamics. Okay. Best in class drag coefficient. Oh, the coefficient of drag. Yeah, so essentially it's slippery. Yeah, it is very slippery. Yeah, it, that's probably why they have those stupid bedsides that go over, like cab extenders mm -hmm. that go over because there's a lot of foiled air that goes there. Yep. Um, and okay. And obviously for EVs, you need to make less foiled air and more slippery air. Yeah. Right? So it's got, according to the article, the best in class drag coefficient. Okay. That's great. I don't really care. Did, did it give you a CD number, by the way? A what? Did it give a number of the coefficient of drag? I off? don't know. It might have. I didn't okay. pay attention to it, to be okay. honest with you. Okay. <laughs> All I saw was best in class. I was like, okay, that's yeah. great. I'd be curious to see what it is compared to like a Tesla because those are supposed to be some of the most slippery vehicles out there right now. And Probably, yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't expect it to be anywhere close to that because the it's front of this car. Yeah, it's a truck and the front of it is like a big, big blunt object. Yeah, it's a truck. That ain't going to happen, right? No. no. Now- let me give you some speculative uh, in terms of price numbers here. Yeah. Because I'm a little bit perplexed when we talk about price. Okay. So it's got a range. All right. Ready for the range? Starting at, as estimated, these are all estimated here. Right. Starting at $41,500. So competing with the Lightning there. Agreed? Okay. 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 But it's top end... Estimated at, are you ready for this? I don't know. $106,500. Wait, it goes from forty to $100,000? That's a $60,000 spread. What? Whoa. That's a big delta. That's a $60,000 spread between yeah, your no, base that's... model and your top end. Holy that's shit, crazy. dude. That's massive. That's not just like a little spread. That's no. huge. That's no. sixty five grand. Hmm. Okay. What are some others? Are that seems other crazy. The next number that I, I do have is that it's 
it's motors. It's dual motored. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got uh, two estimated motor types. They've got two. The the base model is going to have two two hundred and fifty five to three hundred and thirty two horsepower engines, electric engine things, and it's top of the range is going to have essentially two 510 to 664 horsepower whoa okay so, or no that's yeah no that's one engine i don't know <laughs> that's just what the article says okay it confuses me evs confuse me all i know is best case scenario you're getting a lot of horsepower worst case scenario you're not getting much yeah so around 300 horsepower for one version and, of it and then around 600 horsepower for the other version of it. yeah hmm 600 horsepower is a lot, but uh, I bet you that for uh, $106,000, I'd hope to have 600 horsepower. I'd hope to have a hell of a lot more than that. It's yeah. $106,000. It's, it's a lot of money. It does have a zero to 60 time in about four and a half to five seconds, which is good for a truck, Yeah, but it's not really good. The TRX that we talked about, that's faster than that. Is it? And it's nice. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I'm mm. kind of surprised, actually. Did they give a weight of it? Uh, they might have. I didn't see the weight. Yeah, that's fine. EVs are funny because either so you you have like the engineers will come up with here's a battery, right? It's gonna have this much energy in it, mm-hmm. and then you say, okay, either I reduce the weight mm-hmm. to get the range longer, or I make the car more slippery to get the range longer. And in theory, if you do it to the right parts, you can do both at the same time. But there's only so many exterior parts that you can tweak to make it more slippery and reduce weight at the same time. Um, which is why I'm asking about the weight, even though we don't happen to have it off the top of our head. That's fine. Um, it's, eh. I think that this will be a good competitor to the F-150 though, won't it? I think it will. Lightning? I think it will. And I think it's going to absolutely mop the floor with the lightning because you're ready for the range that it's estimating. Yes. 400 miles. Okay. Yeah. It will destroy the lightning then. Cause the, the lightning went to was 300 to 300, right? Yeah. Yeah. A hundred more miles in that vehicle's big. It is. Yeah. It's very big. So that's why I think it's going to mop the flow with the new That lighting. probably explains the reason why it's so slow. Because it's heavier, because it has more batteries, mm-hmm. right? But it does have more range. And I would take more range over more acceleration. Any I, day. Oh, in a truck? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, any day. Especially in the current situation that we're at with EVs, right? Mm-hmm. Where we're, we're in the early days. Well, and, we also know that even the slow EVs are quick. Yeah, compared to an internal combustion, they're fast. Well, yeah. Compare a Corolla to a, a base model Tesla Model 3. The Model 3 is going to wipe the floor. It's Right, it's dumb fast. Much quicker. It's a light switch, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think that trade-off of would you rather have a range or would you rather have acceleration in a truck? Of course you're going to have the range. So do you think that Chevrolet sat back for a while and they were like, oh, okay, we see what you've done, Ford, and then we're going to just top it. Just, just make it better. Do you well, think yeah. that they had a truck that was sitting at 300 miles and they were like, Oh, okay. Ford just came out with 300 miles. How do we get 100 miles out of this? I think they were trying to figure out. I think they started with the Hummer. Like, okay, right. let's see what we can do. And now that we see what we can do, let's go further. But uh, Yeah. Kind of try to, I mean, 400 miles is like hitting it out of the park for an EV. That's proper. That's good. Uh, Tesla doesn't have a 400 mile car yet, <clears throat> which is impressive because they're, they've been leading the charge for many years now. <laughs> leading the what? Leading the charge, yes, yes. But I'm <laughs> Of uh, which I think that they're actually going to start to fall off in the next five years. Think people will stop buying Teslas? I think so. Yeah, mm. and I think that the the way that's going to happen though is like, who will be the first car company that comes out with a twenty five to thirty thousand dollar EV that gets like two hundred fifty three hundred miles thousand or three hundred miles? Like that's going to be the sweet spot for a daily for a lot of people. Yeah. Unfortunately, you're probably that's right. the sweet spot. Right. You're probably right about that. Whoever does that first is going to eat Tesla's lunch. Because right now, all the Tesla people are getting into it because it's like the best option at the moment. But when there's that out and that has solid tech, why would I don't, I don't really see the point in a Tesla. So, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. This is good to see, though. So now that leaves up to bat, we have the only other car, man, or the only other American manufacturer. Dodge. Yes. Yeah. So I wonder when we'll see their vehicle come out. Do you think it'll be this year? I hope never. <laughs> I hope they just keep making the TRX. Stop. And I'm instead of a a, a six point two liter supercharged V eight, I hope they put like a an eight. I hope they put the Viper engine in it, an eight liter V ten. It's, it's they're not doing that. I can tell you they're making an EV. 
But when they release it, I'll be curious to see the numbers. And do you think that they're sitting back right now going, hmm, yes, 400. I see you and I raise you 100. <laughs> they, you know what? I bet you are. They've got their poker face on, yes. leaning back in their chair, and they're stroking their mustache. <laughs> Thinking, hmm. 400 or do you think they're in there like the engineers are scrambling right now like oh shit we can only get 250 out of this thing what do we do what do we do what do we do <laughs> you know there, there is definitely that dichotomy of like okay we are struggling to top 310 yeah or there's the idea of hmm, hmm. have we been have we been sandbagging this whole time <laughs> have we been sitting back in like a 500 mile range ev that no one's talked about yet and we're just waiting to just drop like a a Moab, a mother of all bombs of EVs I, on someone. And it be would like, be. Boom! It would be. If you could get 500 miles in a truck, it would be the Moab. This 400 is nearly a Moab. Yeah. It's close. It's close. That's cool to see, though. But that's the new Silverado EV. All right. I, yeah, it's that. I'm, I'm a fan of it. I know you're not a fan I'm of I'm a fan EVs of the general, front but... of it. I'm not a fan of the rear of it. And I just know I'm not a fan of EVs in general. But we know that. Yes, that's nothing. New. So shall we move on? We shall. Okay. So I got some news to chat about. Okay. Um, out at CES, weird stuff usually comes out. Like somebody will bring out, a, I don't know, a fridge where you can see through the door to see what you have in there. Like some just absolutely It's just invention wild. for invention's sake. Yeah, it's absolutely. Wild. Somebody came up with a, a way to charge your electronics using uh, like Wi-Fi signals. Kind of cool, actually. <laughs> so you're charging your phone while you're on Wi-Fi? Yeah, yeah your phone charges through your Wi-Fi. It like uses the little electromagnetic Wi-Fi radio waves that are coming through us all the time, and it uses that to charge your phone, which I think is actually brilliant. Who thinks this stuff up? I mean, it's how just high, energy waves. How high was the guy that thought, no. yes, I am going to no. charge my phone with my Wi-Fi? No. How convenient would that be? Sure. There's that's... Wi-Fi everywhere. So you would never have a phone that's dead. Exactly. Does that sound good to you? I, my phone's not normally dead anyway because I don't know. I charge my phone at night. Yeah, but when it is, which is like never, you could go to anywhere in the world basically and have. It's pretty cool. Anyway, we're just inventing things for inventing's sake. Yeah, that's what CES is all about. It's, they come out with consumer electronic stuff. That's what it is. Um, BMW came out with something that's kind of in the weird realm, and okay. they came out with a uh, the BMW iX Flow. So they make an iX SUV, uh, and then they put in... It's Roman numerals, iX, that's nine. So BMW yeah. 9 Flow? The BMW 9 Flow. Yes. They ended up putting in <laughs> uh, some stuff in the paint uh, to make it so that it can change the color of the car at will. Wow. <laughs> now you, Mr. Paint Person... I am Mr. Paint Person. You like your colors. What would you call this color? I would call it dumb. <laughs> Here's how it works. The BMW X-Flow is covered in e-ink, which is the same material used in like e-readers. Oh, like okay. So you essentially, it's a BMW Kindle. It is It is a BMW Kindle, yes. Um, and you can use the, it basically has like grains of magnetic material in it. And okay. you could use electromagnetic uh, like waves or you know you can change the polarization of those magnetic materials to make mm -hmm. it either light or dark which does mean that it can only be white or black or gray right or the, anywhere in between those two it can't be colored are they planning on doing a color version i don't know but i hope so because that'd be really cool if you could change the color of your car at will to go from british racing green to voodoo blue what are you in the mood for today <laughs> i'm always in the mood for british racing green every day though honestly yeah can you imagine though in in 20 years in the future when we have paints that can be changed up by like any time you want and people will think back man you remember when they actually had the same color car the whole time and they couldn't change it <laughs> that's yeah, gonna but, be a uh, thing ah uh, it is why why i like my steady paint i like the fact that it's a white car or it's a black car or it's a green car it's a blue car it's a red car but why not both? You know, you know what, though? You know what that's going to make it really difficult for? Policemen. Mm, that's Looking true. for criminals. Yeah. Yes, suspect it is in a red Corvette. But a blue Corvette just drove past <laughs> me. What the hell? It'd be awesome, too. Well, I don't know about awesome, but I could see a, a point in which if all of the car could change all the color at any time, you could make the car invisible from a certain direction. Make it blend with the background? Yes. So like the yes. front fender blends with the curb. Right. 
but only a certain direction. You can't do it at all directions at all times. I find that would be useful in a military yeah. instance yeah. where you're trying to sneak up on someone. Right, where you know the enemy is in a certain direction. Yes. But the enemy could be the policeman. <laughs> the enemy could be the policeman. <laughs> if you're running from the Rousers. Yes. <laughs> it's kind of cool tech, though, what they've done here. And I think that it does... This is like them starting to get into and trying to push the limit of paints and other types of things that can change the exterior color of the car at will, which is kind of cool. I will tell you the little gift that we're looking at here of the BMW changing its colors. The iX is their EV SUV. Right. And when it goes from that like black to white and the lights turn on, it looks like a beaver waking up. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it looks like a beaver waking up in the morning going ah yes oh what a lovely night sleep it so you hang it's got a big grill well it does yes but like just this like it's got these really like skinny little eyes yeah. it just looks like a beaver <laughs> does it not look like a beaver it i can see what you're saying i see what you're saying it looks like a beaver waking up first thing in the morning i think it looks it looks cool i can i can tell where like the panels start and stop based on the way the sequence of like the paint is changing colors right yeah and you can see how the magnetic filaments are swapping across the wave it's like a it's kind of like waves on a beach kind of situation yeah um i am curious though because it's like that magnetic ink yeah does that mean you can like go with a magnet and like draw <laughs> yeah. a dick on someone's car i think so Because that's what i would definitely be doing yeah because i am just a child in, deep down inside unless they i had... would just go up to one of these cars and i just take a magnet and like draw a dick with it yeah, you totally could. Because well, that's what you do. Unless they had a strong enough electromagnet where like your magnet would not be able to overcome it. But I think it'd start to get kind of dangerous at that point. Because like <laughs> anything you have in your pocket starts to get like yoinked around and yeah, it's yeah. So I don't know. That it's, could be interesting. It could be. It's pretty neat though. Would you buy a car that has color changing paint like that? I would like to buy one that had color changing paint, not just black and white changing paint. So you would go from like the world rally blue to Grand Prix White or yeah. whatever? The, the actually the new phone that I have the, the <clears throat> Google Pixel, uh, there all the app icons change colors based on what they compute the majority of your background color to be on your phone. So every time you change your background color, your app colors change too, and so does like a whole bunch of other stuff in the interface. And I think that's actually kind of cool. Oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> too much. You wake up and you're like, you know, just not feeling it today. Change the background color and everything's different. It's just way different. It's kind of neat. That's, I'm not, a, you are amused by that stuff. Yeah, you're a dinosaur. I'm not amused by that stuff. No, at you're all. not. Nope. That's fine. Nope. You're right. <laughs> yes. Yes. Shall we move on? We shall. Okay. Let's talk about some racing. Okay. Let's talk about a team that I really enjoyed watching, especially this past year, because they ran Porsches. But this team of WeatherTech Racing coming up for the new Daytona 24 hour, Rolex 24 Daytona this year has decided to do something. A bit strange, whether tech racing has. Uh, so this is like the first time I've heard of someone really doing this. But what they're doing is they are running two different cars in the same class. Um, I've heard of... Wait. In the same class. Two different, uh, like two different manufactured cars? Yes. Not oh. just like two different Porsche RSRs. Yeah, yeah I've heard of they two did cars. That, they did that at, at uh, Petit Le Mans. They ran two different RSRs right. in That's GTLM. That's normal. But that would be like running a Porsche and a Corvette in GTLM. That'd be weird. For yeah. the same team? They're doing that in GTD Pro at the Rolex. They're running mm. a Mercedes and a Porsche in the same class. And it's coming from the same team. Yeah, like with each other. Against each other, with each other, in the same class. Why would you do that? That's really weird. Let's talk about that because I don't really understand it. I don't either. There's... I think... I'll give you a theory here. Okay. I think they wanted Cooper McNeil, the essentially the owner of WeatherTech's son. Yep. Right? I think they wanted him to get as much seat time as possible. And I think they had just like the old AMG GT, the GT3 that they had that they had raced before. Mm -hmm. I think they had that just like sitting around and we're like, yeah, we're going to enter this. <laughs> but why don't we also enter the GT3R? Because that's what we were going to enter anyway. The GT3R is the new car? Is that a new Well, car? that's the current... <laughs> All right, let me try to uncomplicate things. Oh, God, things. why'd I ask? You, you should not have asked. You're correct. <laughs> so, GTLM raced a Porsche RSR. Yes. GT Daytona yes. raced a Porsche GT3R. Okay. So, they were pretty much ordering a GT3R as in like, okay, this is what we're going to be running in GT Daytona. And then I think they had this 
AMG just sitting around. I was like, oh, we've got this. We might as well run this as well. Mm-hmm. That's my theory. I can't. Okay. There's absolutely no factual evidence to support that. But that's just my theory because I know they've ran an AMG GT, AMG GT before. And I know they've also ran a Ferrari 488 before. And they've ran Porsches before. They ran them all, right? Yep. I think they just had one sitting around. They're like, oh, yeah, we might as well go ahead and just run this while we're here. Okay. I mean, expensive to run, but that's fine. And that brings me to my next point. That's got to be stupid expensive since you've got two separate manufacturers. Right. You can't, like, share parts. No. Like, if you've got two Porsches, you can kind of go, oh, yep. shit, this one got into an accident. I've got a spare tub for yep. this one. Or, you know, if you're running two Corvettes, oh, this one burned through all of its brakes. Let me grab some brakes from this guy. You've got to have two completely randomized different sets of parts that have zero correlation between the two. And not only that, you got to train the people on how to work on both cars. Yes. Uh, yeah. This seems... This seems the like... Only, <sighs> the only thing I can think is if you get screwed over on balance, balance performance on one of them, you don't get screwed over on the other one. But that is a... A big ask. That's that is a lot a, of a <laughs> lot of money to throw at BOP. <laughs> that is a lot of money to throw at BOP. That seems you're right. You're not gonna get BOP to death in two different kinds of cars, but no. still that just seems almost a bit ridiculous. Like yeah. are they throwing their own race away by doing I, that? I I don't know. Also, like, what happens at the end of the race if you're one two and they're battling it out and they both end up punting each other? Like, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 we'll see. Yeah, like, say I, one goes into a tar barrier in qualifying. You can't steal the wing from the other. No, you can't. Like, I, I don't know. And to make things even weirder, Cooper McNeil is running stints in both cars. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. So he's not just running the Porsche or the Mercedes. Oh, man, that's He's weird. running the Porsche and the Mercedes. That's really weird because now your driving dynamics change. Yeah, like how do you as a driver do that? Go from know. two different cars, rear engine, front, front engine. engine. Yeah. Not just like two different cars. No. Like, you know. Way a, different a, driving like dynamics. Like they're completely, completely, completely different. Yeah. That is just kind of weird. And the weird thing is, is now I don't want to rag on anyone here, but Cooper McNeil is, he technically is a pro driver, but I think he's just barely out of AM, isn't he? I think so. I think he's yeah. maybe still uh, an AM rated driver. Right, because he was in GTLM this past season, right? As, yeah, because. As like the rookie. <laughs> yeah, at, because WeatherTech sponsors a series and was like, right. okay, well, we want to run this, so let's make him run it. Mm-hmm. Is he going to be bringing two cars down if he's trying, if he's not <laughs> a. Well, and I don't mean to sound yeah, I see like what you're an ass, but like. He's relatively new yep. to the whole pro racing. I mean, he's been racing professionally, but not as a pro rated driver. Is you, this just saying, let's give him some hours? If you want seat time and you want to put those big boy pants on, it's one way to do it, but it's not not the normal way to do that it. I'll seems, tell you that. That seems brave. I like your theory of they just had another GT3 car laying around. It happened to be the Mercedes and they just, yeah, sure, let's run it. Yeah, they just kind of said, to hell with it, let's go ahead and do it. It kind of feels like that to me. That's my guess. Interesting. Again, it's just a theory. I have absolutely zero factual evidence to support that whatsoever. Right, right. Um, and I do know there's been a lot of, like, you know, extra entries and stuff like that. There's an extra Porsche GT3R through, was it KCMG Motorsports, whoever that is. Okay. A lot of people are racing in at the Rolex. There's going to be, it's going to be a good field for sure. Yeah, no, it's going to be a complete, I mean, it's going to be a packed field, which is going to be pretty amazing to watch. And, yeah. Uh, I'm pumped. I am excited for the 2023 season though with yes. top class racing because that's going to get freaking wild. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. It definitely will. It definitely will. So let's move on. Let's do it, my friend. So there was a. Have you been to a car dealership lately? I know you were trying to buy a car for the so, business. Y- y- yeah, we were trying to upgrade a car at one point. Yep. Okay. Did they have any cars on the lot? Was it tough? No pickets? dealers have cars on the lot at all. Hmm. None. Okay. At least from what we what I've seen personally. So I actually have some data to back that up. Do you? Uh, I tend to. We tend to run these queries at work um, once in a while, and okay. at work I, we work with many different dealerships, like a couple hundred dealerships we work with. Uh, we actually process their inventory data. And I managed to run this query at work, which ended up spitting out this graph. 
And this graph shows you the total new, total used, and total inventory counts for a bunch of dealerships, many hundreds of dealerships. So this gives us a good representation of like what's going on in the, the dealership world, in the car world. Yeah. Blue being the new inventory, the blue okay. line. Red being the used inventory, and yellow being the combination of both of them. And this is about over the last year, right? It's about January of last year to January of this year. A very interesting trend is going on with the used yes. car market where it is trending up quickly and the yeah. new car market is basically sitting still for the past six months and was trending down drastically in the beginning of the year, mm. which we knew. But I, I have found, at least the data signifies here, that like we're starting to even out, if not climb a teeny tiny bit in the new car market. It's right. definitely not trending down anymore. A little bit. Yes. For now. But I am shocked to see that used cars are still climbing. I think, again, we've talked about this before. If you've got a used car you're sitting on that you don't need, sell it while you can before you get caught with your pants down. Yeah, it seems like it if you don't need it. But if you do need it, I don't know what to tell you because you're going to get price hiked on whatever else you buy. And that's kind of the, that's also the same like thought process of when the housing market goes up. Mm hmm. Right. Like, yes, your house is worth a hundred grand more, but so is the house that you are going to go move into. Right. Like, yes, you can sell your house for a hundred grand. Mm -hmm. Great. But what does that buy you? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Same situation. And I do find it interesting that the total inventory kind of stayed pretty darn steady across the whole year. You know? Yeah. Like they just filled in the gap with used. Yeah, they if just new was the problem. A crap ton of used, as, as many as they could. I know that dealerships from the ones that I've like listened on phone calls and stuff are literally hiring people to just go buy used cars. Really, J just hound people on Craigslist, go buy as many used cars as you can because they'll be able to price hike them by five, ten k, no problem. Oof. Every time, yeah. And unfortunately, people will buy them. Yeah, they're most get kind of pigeonholed into buying them and in, in that kind of price hike video, <clears throat> which is unfortunate but it is what it is yeah still cool to see the data so very yeah. interesting yeah i agree very cool to see the data i do like looking at graphs graphs are fun to look at yes graphs are always interesting to look at can we talk about something else that's interesting we can we can so did you know that at one point you could buy you could buy a manual v10 sports truck a manual V10 sports truck. What could you buy? The Viper truck. The Viper truck? Did you know that that existed? I think I did know that that Like, existed. did you know that was a thing? I think so. So, you remember when, like, we've talked about the Ford Lightning, like the proper Ford Lightning, mm -hmm. the sports truck, not the EV. And it was always, like, this cool regular cab, like, sports truck. It was had a great big giant V8 that mm -hmm. was just a monster. Well, a lot of people have forgotten about the... SRT10 Dodge Ram. <laughs> the absurdity of this vehicle is through the roof. <laughs> I love it. It's of course you do. It's a Viper engine in a light truck. It's an 8.3 liter V10 with a six-speed manual. It's eight liters. It is 8.3 eight? liters. 8.3. Oh liters. How much power does it make with eight liters? 500 horsepower. Okay, it's a reasonable number. It is reasonable. It's not like you get eight liters of a, v, a V10 with like 310. If you just told me here's an eight liter engine, I would expect 800 horsepower out of it because that's <laughs> dumb big. So 100 per liter? Basically. <laughs> I mean, my BRZ is doing that. Like, it's, uh, it's close to it. Yeah. Yeah. Fair so. enough. But I was just, you know, I was going through a quick, you know, Craigslist and mm -hmm. auto trader search just poking around because that's what i do with my life because the entire reason for computers and phones is just to conduct business and look at cars oh uh, yes that's what life. they're there yes. for mm -hmm. um but i was just poking around i was like you know i forgot about these yeah and i wonder what they're going for now oh boy 40 grand 50 grand that's people are sleeping on these i think people have forgotten about these. really that's what they're going for i think people have forgotten about these yeah they've got some miles on i'm sure if you want a blue chip one with like two miles on it yeah you're gonna pay out the ass for it but if you're just wanting one as a driver, just go have mm. fun with and hoon. This could be the bargain of the century. Do you know what they were new? I don't remember what they were new. Um, they had to be more than 40 to 50 grand new. I think new they were about that. I really? think you're buying them for close to original MSRP. This is such a weird vehicle. Like, <laughs> It is so weird. <laughs> what is it, it trying to be? A sports truck. 
but 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 why? <laughs> because why like, not? What is the practicality behind that? It, there is none because okay. it holds the world record of trucks driven at 154 miles an hour. Oh, a truck that okay, a truck that went 154. Okay, yeah. All right, a production truck land speed record. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> of course you do. I love that. With an eight liter, I imagine the gas mileage is so. When it was new, it was sold for 47 grand, 41 grand. Oh my god! So they've gone up a. So your if about side even are gone up. Your your about side even are gone up. I think people have slept on them. Because if I told you, give me 40 or 50 grand and I can get you a manual V10, what would you say? Not knowing what I'm talking about. If I just said, you got 40 to 50 grand, let me get, you could probably, honestly, you could probably even buy them for 30 to 40. Uh, I'd say like old BMW or something like that. You'd probably think like, hell yeah, let's go, right? Yeah, yeah. Give me a manual V10 and then I show up with a Dodge Ram SRT10. (laughs) That would be unexpected. (laughs) That would be the most unexpected thing in the world. (laughs) I forgot they existed. Yeah, yeah. A the, Viper truck. The last time I heard of one of these, it was being like given away in one of those Omaze giveaways, which I was like, oh, yeah, those things are a thing. And they're wild. Yeah, they're absolutely absurd. 8.3 liter. I can't V10. believe that engines used to be that size and get so little horsepower out of them. I don't understand that. Did, did it have an MPG? Nine. <laughs> 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 single digit city mpg rated epa nine <laughs> <laughs> what if you're cruising at top gear with low rpms on the highway you're gonna get all the way up to maybe 15 15 mpg let's go. nine to 15 mpg let's go oh i want eight of god them. i want eight of, of them. course you do Did, was it so in, in in my thought process, this is probably a fairly light truck. It's probably pretty quick. 500 horsepower, did it have a weight? Uh, it actually weighs 5,000 pounds, which oh, for a truck uh, is light. A little heavier than I thought. I was thinking like 4,000. It's a truck, dude. It's it not is a truck. Be it's, it's a fairly small truck, though. Like It's not real big. It's a full-size truck, though. Eh. Honestly, it's a 5,000 pound truck. Okay. Was it quick? Did it have a zero to sixty time? Um, that's a good question. I don't remember. Let me find that out. Okay. Because that is something that is worth mentioning. Because <laughs> it's probably not crazy fast. Actually, five point three seconds. And this is oh. back in two thousand four to two thousand six. That's actually pretty darn good. You know what? That's, that's properly actually pretty quick. good. And that's a truck. Yeah. And these were only available from two thousand four to two thousand six. Dang. So that's dude. back in the day when like Zero to 60 times sub six seconds was like freaking moving. So right? that, that's one of your sleeper picks, huh? That's I, like a, I, I forgot about that. And I was like, dude, a Viper truck. A proper sleeper for you would be a Viper truck that getting nine MPG. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You have eight, an 8.3 liter V10. Eight liters. Jesus, dude. I love that. Uh, that's wild. It is wild. It All is right. wild. But yeah, that was something that came to my mind as I was just scrolling through Auto Trader, just poking yeah. around, and I was like, oh, damn. Yeah. I forgot about these things. Sometimes, and I think a lot of people have too. Sometimes just scrolling through those sites can be awesome. Yeah. So you can just find And a deep stuff. rabbit hole. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've learned to stay far away from bring a trailer. <laughs> because all of a sudden, I'm starting to bid on like a Unimog or some sort of <laughs> tank or a random thing that i didn't know existed something that won't fit in your garage and you certainly don't need but you want it anyway oh yes. yeah you can yeah. buy tanks on bring a trailer oh yeah how much do you want a tank i i don't want a tank oh but i want you a do. tank yes i do yes you do i would so drive around in a tank you, you're an absolute animal yeah i love it <laughs> <laughs> i do love it but yeah the, the viper truck i wanted to mention that that's cool that's yeah so are neat. we did talk a little bit about car buying recently. Mm-hmm. I want to go a little further on car buying for a second. Okay. So speaking from some, I guess, secondhand experience from uh, a family member of mine mm-hmm. who we did end up pulling the trigger on a car. So Toyota is a major brand and I'm sure other brands do something similar like maybe Honda or Nissan or Chevy or whoever. Okay. I'm sure other brands do something similar to this, but as this uh, family member of mine 
was buying this new car. After the sales process was all over and finished, they were going through all the setup and things. And there was the, you know, the salesperson was like, okay, let me see your phone and we'll, we'll get everything all situated, creating yep. a password and all that. And then the salesperson just started opting in for everything, everything mm. without any sort of consent. It was just like, okay, opted in, opted in, opted in. Was it on their phone? Yeah. Ooh. And here's the issue. I don't think the salesperson knew what they were actually opting them in for. No, there's no way. Because did you know that with a lot of new cars now, you're being opted into these services where the manufacturer is actually tracking oh, yeah. everything. Oh, yeah. Not just location, but every throttle position, mm-hmm. braking position, literally everything. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got to tread lately here because I, I work for a company who does some of this on the internet as well. Um. I can tell you that from the tech perspective, uh, like the internet tech perspective, everything is definitely tracked. And I mean everything. Uh, anything you do online can be tracked, no problem. And it's very valuable for those companies to have. You've seen it with all the social media platforms. You've seen it with Google, with Facebook, with all of them, right? Yeah. Um, why a car company would not track you, I don't know. Like it other than for privacy purposes. But if you come at it from their angle, obviously they want all that data. They want to know how hard you drive. And you know damn well that like the insurance companies want all that data. You know damn well that it just goes up the corporate ladder to anybody and anybody who wants it. Um, it's We're starting to get into this weird area though where like certain companies are starting to push back. Actually, one of them being Apple. Really? Apple's pushing back. Uh, they Good. actually told Facebook... They gave them the middle the middle finger. They gave Facebook the middle finger. Good. And they allowed people to opt out of like data tracking in their apps uh, on iPhones. Okay. And if they did opt out, Facebook would get delayed signals by up to five days and randomly delayed signals. So that sent everyone at Facebook scattering. Uh, and I, I mean, like, literally, they were a mess when this happened. And this happened last year, a little, kind of in the middle of last year. I feel like I remember hearing something about that. Yes. Um, so I have a feeling that we're going to get into a situation where that kind of thing is going to happen in the auto industry as well. Right now, we're starting to get into like the beginnings of where the internet was maybe five years ago, where people are starting to figure out, oh, with cookies, I can uniquely track a person across a whole bunch of different websites, and I can figure out a bunch of patterns and do a bunch of advertising for them, which is what Facebook figured out. And they did a really good job at that. And that's why the ads are so tailored to you. But what car companies are starting to figure that out is we can probably do all this data. We could track all this stuff. We can then start to sell it to like insurance companies and all that other stuff. And someone somewhere is going to become the person who unleashes all of this. And eventually legislation will have to come down to say like, hey, you can't be tracking all that stuff and you can't be selling it over to the insurance companies. Like that's not okay. Yeah. I don't like this feeling. No. No, from a consumer standpoint, it's horrible. Like, I just, why the hell does this company need to know every single second of every single day where I am and what are they doing with that information? I don't like that. You don't want to know. <laughs> just, it's, it's being sold behind closed doors, isn't it? It just doesn't <laughs> sit well with me. No, it doesn't sit well for any consumer. And that's why, like, someone has to come out with it and then legislation has to come through to say, stop it. Because right now, there's no reason for them to stop it. It's just more money on the backside for them. So why would they not do it? Like, mm. If you're in their shoes right now, would you say no to that? I guess it depends if you have morals or not. Yeah, but we're in corporate America. True. <laughs> Is corporate America going to say no to that? More money? You're Hello? right. No, you're right. You're, you're right. That makes that It's makes a capitalist sense. system we have. That does make sense in terms of the kind of what they're doing with the data of just selling it. But what is the end user doing with the data? The end user being you? No, the end user who's buying the data. Oh, the, the the insurance companies or whoever else wants it? Yeah. Either advertising or building profiles on you to do, like, normally, right now, it's mostly advertising. But in the industry, or in the insurance industry, that that's where it's going to get of. real sketchy. That we know of. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, it's mostly advertising. I don't, I, insurance is about to become really weird, really fast. Think so? Yes. Between full self-driving and the ability to get all this data out of your car in real time, it's going to get real weird. I don't like that. I We're going into it regardless. Like, There's no going away from it. 
Unless you keep your... I'm moving to Montana and buying a Viper truck and <laughs> living blissfully in my thousand acres of paradise. Okay. <laughs> no one can track me. I don't know how we're going to record the podcast, but okay. <laughs> I don't either, but we'll have to figure that out. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so that was just something that I that I'm I'm not a fan of to my attention. The sales guy opting you into everything because there is like a lot of data privacy things there that they should be able to check the box on, and like that's invading their privacy, big time. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised though if their manager was the one that said, "Hey, just check all those boxes and keep going." <laughs> that was my thought as well. Was like I don't think the salesperson themselves was actually like no, like having a malicious intent. It no. was more just like. Hey, coming from the GM of the dealer or whoever, like, hey, make sure that all of your customers get opted in so they can save X amount of money on their insurance or whatever the case it is, or so that they can get yep. Wi-Fi in their car yep. or whatever the case it is. And the salesperson probably thought, yeah, I'm going to do a great job there. I'm going to make sure everyone gets opted in. Sweet. Yep. Pat on the back for you. Good job, salesman. No, I think it's deeper than that too. I think it's uh, the manager will get told by the manufacturer if you get X number of people to sign up with this, we will reimburse you based I, on that. Yeah, I think that's definitely so, yeah, the it, real cookie crumb. There. It's coming from the top, going down, and there's money involved. And that's like, that's just what it is. Yeah, I guess that is. I can tell you that the manufacturers do get paid or they will get reimbursed based on uh, advertising dollars that they spend. Yeah, no, if, I get that much. If they do it in a certain way that like makes the brand look good for the manufacturer. Um, and they will get refunded like, many many thousands of dollars a month too really yes it's big it's a big industry hmm. yeah some interesting stuff yeah i figured i'd bring that up to you because uh, it was something to think about that i've been pondering that i just didn't was not a fan of that will continue to come up as we keep on talking about the news don't worry oh. <laughs> so as you were driving around teaching people how to drive yeah how's that been going lately uh it's been going yeah I've People had learning? some good ones, and I've had some not good ones. Uh-oh. All right. Yeah. Well, as you've been teaching, have you seen anything? I have. So this week, I've seen just a regular plethora of regular everyday sports cars and supercars. Mm -hmm. So just today, new 992 Turbo S Cabriolet. Okay. I've seen a couple of Hurricanes. I've seen a Ferrari California. I've seen a few Astons, DB11s. I did see a Vantage, which yep. is very nice. Uh, I saw an R8. But... Those are the usual spots. You really can't go a week here without seeing a Huracan. You're right. I saw three Bentleys today. Ooh, what kind? <laughs> Continental GTs. Just driven a by a, an old man. Yeah. That's usually like, with an yeah. out-of-state license plate. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like New York or something like that. New York, Michigan. Yeah. Pennsylvania. That's, that's what Ohio. They do. Yeah. Yep. Run a business up there. Come down here. Retire. And get your Continental GT and drive it around to Florida. Pretty much. So speaking of old people and old people cars. Okay. We think of old people and we think of brands like Lexus. Mm -hmm. We think of Fords like Crown Vicks. Mm -hmm. We think of Buicks. Mm -hmm. Do we think of Cadillac? Yes. Okay. What if I told you there was a Cadillac that wasn't made for old people? <clears throat> um, there's the V line of Cadillacs. There is. And those are like teetering on the edge of not being for old people. I agree. They are teetering the edge of not being for old people. But yes. did you know that Cadillac has spiced them up with now the not just the V-Line, but the Blackwing version of the V-Line? Which is kind of like, if you think about it, you've got Mercedes, yeah. you've got Mercedes AMG, then you've got Mercedes AMG Black, black. Series. Yeah. Right? That's like the Black Series. Oh, really? Yeah. Mercedes or Cadillac does that sort of thing? They do. I didn't know that. They do. So I actually saw, and this is going to be my spot of the week, okay. the brand spanking new Cadillac CT5 black V Blackwing. Okay. And I was stopped next to it at a stop sign, and I kind of looked over, and I was like, hmm. you know, I can kind of dig that. Yeah? I, it's, I kind of like it. It kind of competes with, like, think of it like a Mercedes E63 or, a, you know, a BMW M5 or uh, something of that kind of idea. Does it look significantly more aggressive? It does. Okay. It's got a lot more beef to it. It's lower. It's wider. It's got a lot more carbon bits. It's got extra fins and grills, and it's it's got a bigger rear spoiler, bigger tire. It just looks a lot more purposeful and kind of menacing. And it had a black wing. Well, it has a black spoiler, technically. Yeah, not, technically, yeah. it's not a wing, and I'm not going to go down that path right now. Don't, don't. But, <laughs> yeah, no, it... 
I, honestly, I was stopped next to him. I was like, that's the new CT5 V Blackwing. Oh, damn. I don't think I've seen one in real life yet. I've seen the Vs. Yeah. I've seen a lot of yeah. the new Vs, but I did, haven't seen the new V, the Blackwing version, which is just harder and faster and more. I did not know that that was a thing, and I have not seen one either. It does look... It looks a little more aggressive in the back end, at least from the picture that we're looking at here. Uh, and you can definitely see the black wing, which does it have a wing on the normal CTSV? It has a small lip spoiler. Okay. But not as, not big as pronounced and as that. Pronounced as that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> what are the numbers on it, though? So, and that's what, that's after I saw it, I was like, you know what? Let me go look at some numbers on the V black wing. Yeah. The CT5. So it's MSRP from 83.9, so 84 grand. We're right? talking about a high end, like <clears throat> It's a luxury line. sports sedan. Yes. That's just what it is. It's going to be expensive. This is more of a muscle sports sedan, in my opinion, though. Okay. So for that eighty-four grand, you get a six-point-two liter V eight. I'm a fan of that. Yeah. No, that's good. I'm a fan of that. And you get six hundred and sixty-eight horsepower out of it. Great. They Holy. Hit, they hit the shit. number. One hundred horsepower go. per liter. Great. That seems spicy. No, that's yeah. That in how... a Cadillac, dude. <laughs> Does it give you a weight? Uh, weight, forty one hundred pounds. Okay, yeah, no, that's that's a lot of power for that weight. That could be that's fast. The next proper sports sedan you buy. Yeah, I actually can kind of dig it. I know the old CTS Vs, not the CT five, but the CTS Vs, right? Were pretty wild. They were, yeah, they were potent. They had some power. They weren't. I don't think. They were still kind of heavy, if I recall. They were. I don't think that they were particularly light. But yep. this just looks, uh, it, it really is like a, a copy of, they said, okay, I see you, Mercedes. I see what you're doing with your Black Series. Here's a little bit more carbon. Here's a little bit more wing. Here's a little crazier engine. Here's a little more power, a little better suspension. Just turn the dial up. So I did actually just Google a quick little article on the CT5 V Blackwing. Mm-hmm. So this makes me... A hell of a lot more happy. Did you know it's in a, it's available in a six speed manual? Oh, I did not. Holy know that. shit! A new Cadillac luxury sports sedan <laughs> with a manual, <laughs> bro. That's why awesome. would we not buy this? I don't know, honestly. <laughs> Zero to sixty three point six seconds with the manual. That's properly 3. freaking 6. fast with the manual. Yeah, that's fast, bro. Can I get a hell yeah? Or you can get it with a ten speed auto, which goes three point four seconds. Zero to sixty. Hmm. That's stupid fast. 21 miles. Well, okay, no, that's... So, like, the competitor yeah. to this is what? The C63 AMG? I See, right? I can't decide if this is a C63 competitor or an E63 competitor. So, the smaller or the bigger. Right. This may be the C63 I competitor. I think it's the C. I would say yeah. this competes with your C63 AMG and your M3. How much is a C63 AMG new? Uh, about the same, I think. Is it? I think they're all close to it. They're all pretty close to it. Yeah, I, I think that it's probably in about the race. You could start yeah. base price at you know eighty five ish grand, and then you could option even on this. I'm just looking at this article. You could option carbon ceramic brakes. <laughs> yes, on a Cadillac, on a goddamn Cadillac. This is, you know what this, <laughs> you know what this is, you know what this is. This would be Cadillac's GT Daytona car yeah. that you can buy for the street. Yeah, it's like take their Cadillac DPI. Make right. it a GTD car right. and sell it for the street. They used to run. They did. Yeah, they used to run. They the used v. to run it back in the Not Pirelli in World Champ. Yeah, Pirelli World Pirelli, Challenge, which is now ACO something or another. The or SRO. SRO. Sorry. Yeah, no. yeah it's SRO something or another. Yep. Um, or GT America, I think, is what it's called now. Yeah. Interesting. Why would have, you not buy who, this car? You who? can get it with a manual. What it was what? F- Tommy Kendall used to run in that? I think that was yeah. who, one of the drivers. I think it was him. Yeah. I think one of the Taylor Brothers even did like a race in it too. Probably. And I think so. Yeah. But like the more I look at this car, and this one is telling curb weight just shy of 4,100 pounds. So would you really buy this over a C63 AMG? Because looking at the price tags, they're very, very similar. They're all right in that 70 to 90 range. Somewhere in there. If your base model at 80 and you're top of the range at 110 yeah. by the time you get carbon ceramic brakes and everything. You know what? Yes. <laughs> you are an I old man. I would buy a Cadillac. Holy shit. I just said I would buy a Cadillac. Someone come and smite me now because you are an old man. I cannot believe I just said I would buy a Cadillac because you can buy it with a manual. None of the other cars come with a manual. No. Mercedes, BMW, Audi. Yeah. 
you can't buy a new RS5 Sportback with a manual. It's probably a solid gearbox too. Like, I'm, I'm sure it's fun as hell to drive. You can't buy drift the, like an animal. The only one you could buy with a manual would be the M3, but I couldn't get over looking at the face of it. No, no. This looks better than the M3. Honestly, yeah. why would you not buy this car? I don't know. And it's kind of interesting that like we just now stumbled upon it because it wasn't very marketed, was it? There was a little bit of marketing. Was there? And that's it. Okay. Like, we actually saw this at the 12 Hours of Sebring. Did you know that? Yeah. We did see this briefly. That yes. was like their real marketing was like, oh, yeah, here it is at the, on display. And then we walked past it like, oh, great. It's Cadillac. Who gives a shit? Because that's exactly what we did. <laughs> we, were, what we, did. we were walking down. We're like, oh, cool. They've got the... The, the, the C8 Corvette was yeah, there. Yeah, the C8 there. And then we we're walking by. We're like, oh, okay, cool. The Lexus GT Daytona car was sitting out front so we could look at the wing. Right. And we're like, oh, uh, 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 a Cadillac. Okay, All great. Right. It's a new CT fee, CT5 or CTS. Okay, moving yeah. on. And we never actually really looked at it. Hmm. And now that I'm like actually like dissecting this, I, I, I think I would buy a Cadillac. I can't believe I'm saying these words. You age so quickly. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, yes, I'll get my AARP card soon. Sure. <laughs> God, huh. I, I am kind of smitten with this manual transmission 6.2 liter v8 that i can get in a cadillac a very neat spot i will be very curious to spot one of those out in the wild yeah not just a regular v not just a yeah. regular v but a v blackwing and it does it say blackwing like on the badge i think there's look? just a little little i don't remember exactly but i think there's a little bit of extra tag to the v okay but okay. either that i could tell by the the black spoiler on the rear the black wing yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. yes yes but honestly Really, really cool car, and I am kind of in love with it. A very, very cool car. Yes. So that is my spot of the week, the CT5 Blackwing. Okay. All so right. did you happen to see anything whilst you've been out? I and definitely about? did. On okay. the way here, saw California. Uh, I think okay. I saw a 458 as well wandering around. Nothing. Yeah. New, kind of the norm around here. I did see one of the new Aston Martin DBX SUVs. Okay. I'm a fan of those. Are you a fan of them for the price? No, hell no. I'm a fan of them for the looks. (laughs) I think they look very good. Do you? I kind of like it, yeah. I see. You know what's funny? Do you have beef with those? The more I see them, the more I dislike them. Okay, this is like the first one I've seen out and about in the wild. So I've seen a couple of like cars and coffees. I've seen them out and about like just driving around. That's becoming more common where we live. Mm -hmm. The more I see them, the more I'm like, you know, I just... It's losing its luster for me. Really? Yeah. And it's not so much the face of it, but it's the rear that loses its luster for me. Hmm. The rear of it is where I really start to kind of go, ah. I mean, the face isn't bad. It has that no. standard Aston face, the right. nice, very beautiful smile. Right. But when you get to the rear, it's like, I just don't, I just, yeesh. I saw it from the face. It was going the other way. Uh, down the street, and it was like a uh, a gray, like a lighter gray color. Yep. And I thought it looked really good, and I thought the accents popped out real well, and it, it was like a very clean looking car. And I would, I would be, that'd be awesome to rock one of those. You know how much for they a mommy are? missile? Be sweet. You know how much they are? How much? I think. And now, don't quote me, but I think they're like two hundred grand. Oh, I was hoping you'd say like. 80. Oh God, Jesus <laughs> Christ! No. I mean, I'm praying, but <laughs> I think that's like a two hundred thousand dollar SUV. Okay, it's not worth that. It's not even close to worth, and it's that. not even that big. No, it's not that big. Uh, it was just a spot. It's not my full on car spot, though. Okay. So my full on car spot goes to actually a pair of cars. Ooh, which okay. I don't know if anybody's ever done that yet on the show. I don't think we've had a pair spotting. So uh, they do fit together well. Okay. Um, let's start off with the first one that I saw. Like a Mercedes and a Porsche running in GT Daytona? No, no, not like, <laughs> no, no. You'll see, you'll see. So we start off with an old Mustang. It's okay. actually an old Mustang, and it's a Mach 1 Mustang. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I do so like a proper old Mustang. It was actually very cool to see this. Uh, I did look up some numbers on these. Um, this was, I believe it was made around 1970 is when the Mach 1s were like pretty darn popular. Okay. Um, I can tell you the one that I saw was definitely a hard top. They made a convertible version of this as well. Okay. Um, and it's making somewhere between 300 to 200, 250 to 300 horsepower, which is okay numbers. For okay. So that. remember, let's talk about this conversation we've had before. How do you get so little power out <laughs> of such a big engine? 
It, yeah. It, but that is the yeah. time. That, that is, is the of time. the time of the 70s for sure. So you could get it in a three-speed manual or a four-speed manual or a three-speed automatic. That's not a lot of speeds. That's not many speeds. No. I <laughs> imagine you were running a lot of RPM going that, 60 those miles have an hour. Be really tall gearing. Yes. I mean, <laughs> first gear until 40 miles an hour. Right. <laughs> the one that I saw was a hard top. Um, and I think I already saw that. It was also blue, which was pretty cool. It was like the, the lighter blue color, yeah. which was pretty cool. That's a good color for a Mustang. Yes. Um, and I did not know this, but back in, uh, in I think it was 82. No, okay. So in 1969, uh, the GT, the Mustang GT, was actually killed off by this car. Really? Yeah, the Mach 1 killed the GT back in there. I so did not know that. In 69, following poor sales, the GT was killed off, selling only... Uh, five thousand ish units versus the Mach One selling seventy two thousand units. That's, That's a huge jump. Yes, and the Mustang didn't. The GT <clears throat> didn't wear the badge again until uh, nineteen eighty two. So for a long time, the Mach One was like the hot stuff for Mustangs. Wow, that's a huge jump. Yes, holy cow! So that was the older Mach One, and then I also on the same day. Saw a new Mach 1. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So you saw the original and the new. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dang, that's super awesome. That's cool. The new one, in my opinion, actually looks very good. I am. A, I've seen a new Mach 1 as well, especially in that gray. Yeah. I am a big fan of that new Mach 1. I am too. It was, a, I think the one that I saw was like a, a black or a darker gray than this one. Okay. But the, the gray that we're looking at on screen is pretty awesome. Now, mm-hmm. the new Mach 1, oh, I should tell you. You can get one of those old Mach ones for somewhere between seventy and one hundred fifty thousand right now. Big spread, but that also probably depends on the condition. Condition, complete condition, yeah. right? Normal um, to have that spread. blue chip car with no miles on it. Yeah, you're one hundred fifty grand. Right, expensive. Yeah. Um, but the new Mustang uh, can come in, I guess, a six speed manual, which I think is pretty awesome. Give it a big Let's thumbs go. up. Let's go. That's double the amount of speeds. It is. <laughs> it will get you uh four hundred and eighty horsepower with a five liter engine. Yeah, that's. That's proper proper power. Proper it's power. not kill yourself power, no. but it's proper power. Yeah, I think it's about perfect power, <clears throat> actually. Um, it will do uh, 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds. So that's quick. Solidly quick. A quarter mile in 12.6, 12 and a half seconds. It's pretty quick. I, I mean, a 10 second car is where you need parachutes. So I only think two nine seconds. second off. car, but yeah. I thought, uh, whatever. Either way. It's somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, and the base price for this is $53,000. That's base. But you're not buying it for base. You're not buying base. So I'd assume it's back up to 60 to 70 grand, right? Probably close to 80 if you're with dealer markups now. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah. But what do you think about that for 70 grand? A Mach 1. Hmm. Here's my... Okay. Here's my thoughts. (laughs) For 70-ish grand, you could buy a new Mach 1 or you could buy a couple of year old used ford mustang shelby gt350 you could do that and you can buy a gt350 for like 50 grand you with could like do that. thirty thousand miles on it hmm, that is true and that has got the flat plane crank flat plane crank v8 voodoo engine which yep. screams like 8500 rpm i maybe would go to shelby i can see where your head's out there because i just prefer, yeah yeah I love the Mach 1. I, yeah. it, it's a great looking car. I just think for the same money... I Okay, let me put it this way. If I'm choosing between the original Mach 1 and the new Mach 1, mm-hmm. probably the original. Really? Probably. Just because it is an original Mach 1. And yeah. it will continue to appreciate. Right. Assuming right. you don't beat it up. Yeah. Plus, they're both going to be big and heavy. Certainly, it's a Mustang. Why not get the original Big and Heavy? Mm, because like the refinement of this new one is going to be so much greater. Well, let me ask you this. Do I have to daily it? I'd assume so, yeah. You're, you not, know what? you're not dailying it. I am stupid enough to probably daily a vintage Mustang. <laughs> I think I am genuinely that stupid to do that. Okay, well, you'll be broken down literally weekly. Oh, 100%, yes. yes. No, I'll be on the side of the road I'll three times a week. Yes, Without a doubt, yes. It'd be terrible. <laughs> Any rainstorm, you'd be like, oh, crap, we're done. I'm just not going anywhere. I'm just not leaving. <laughs> no, no. Just whatever appointment I have, canceled. <laughs> just, <laughs> what's the weather? 
partly cloudy? No, <laughs> I'm not leaving the house. We'll see it. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I don't think I could go the old one just for the sake of convenience sake. And I bet you this new one is fairly refined. I bet you it does I not you feel bulky to drive. Probably very good car. Yes. I have driven the the four cylinder EcoBoost Mustang and it was not don't don't do that. <laughs> not good. <laughs> but I bet you this is a way different driving experience. Yeah, uh, you know what? If you get a sports car for a daily, mm-hmm. This could be a good daily sports car because it's yeah. not going to be as hard as the Shelby is. Nope. The Shelby will be more track focused, right? Mm-hmm. This would be a probably, and I'm guessing here, probably a bit softer. Yeah. So you could daily it. If this is the car that is kind of the the daily muscle car, sports car that you would drive around that you just enjoy driving, mm-hmm. probably a pretty good, good solid buy, I think. I, I could not agree more. I, I just wish it was maybe 10K lower because we know that like dealer fees are going to mark this up by 10K. That's the only problem that I see, right? If yeah. the dealer fees weren't there and it was properly, what, like 50 grand to start? Okay, yeah, that's about the right spot. But I know that after I go into a dealer and deal with other shit, it's going to be 70 grand. Unfortunately, even a regular good old-fashioned five-liter Mustang is about 50 grand anyway nowadays. Yeah, it's, yeah. That's just, now we're just griping on the price of cars. <laughs> we, are. we are, but... Yes, but I agree with you. If this car was, if you could actually genuinely buy one for like 60 or 62 grand, mm-hmm. not a bad buy. No, not a bad buy at all. It's solid daily car, and it's a Mustang. It's going to be fast. It's going to be fun. It's going to kill crowds. It's going to make a good noise, too. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. As it inhales every pedestrian in a five-mile yeah. radius. That's what they do. That's Well, funny. of course. It's the whole point of it. Yes. <laughs> that's why you buy a Mustang is to kill crowds. All right. Shall we move on then? We shall. We are coming up on that time. We are getting close. Yep. The best part of the show, in my opinion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wish they would have. <clears throat> All right. So, did you come up with anything good? I did. Okay. And it Let's piggybacks off of something I mentioned earlier. All right. I wish mm-hmm. one of the big three, Dodge, would bring back the Viper. Well, why? Because <laughs> it's an 8.3 liter V10, and I want one. <laughs> you just... Uh... And actually, let's talk about a Viper for a second. Okay. You know how we were talking about that, like, decent bargains that you could buy right now? Oh, man, I bet you those have depreciated a ton. Like an original first-gen Viper that's, like, 1995-ish? Yeah. Fucking, like, 30 grand. 30? I've seen him for like 32 grand and I'm really? like, you know what? If I had just random money sitting around that I'm bored with and I'm like, you know, I kind of just want something fun to do. Oh my God. Really? I think I would probably do something really stupid and buy a first generation Viper <laughs> for like what? 30 to 35 grand. How it's much were those stupid. new? I don't remember. Around 93 grand new. They, they've they depreciated a lot. Yeah. Wow. But like a first gen Viper with a great big V10 and a manual gearbox, it's not going to be the prettiest car. It's not going to be the most refined. It's going to be a hunk of crap, frankly. But, right. You could get a V10 with a manual for like 30 grand? Sports car? Yeah, it's a proper sports car. Like, it's, it's dumb fast. It's going to have a crazy engine. It's going to try to kill you. That's fine, though. That's what you're going to kit it for. I wish Dodge would bring back the Viper. So they did have it back, right? They did. They in, had it, and then they lost it, and then they had it again. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, are those, those aren't up for sale anymore? They stopped those? They stopped making new Vipers. Okay. Do those hold their value? Because they're I think fairly they new, I Vipers. believe. Yeah. Um, they are still pretty hefty in price. Mm. You could pretty much not buy a newer Viper yeah. or any. Interesting. Yeah. Those old Vipers that you're talking about, though, are, are way different. And those are those are animals. Those are absolute monsters. Mm-hmm. Um, you would be thrashed in one of those. Oh, oh, you'd be destroyed. Yeah. You'd be absolutely destroyed. But th- it's kind of what that car does. So I just quickly Googled it. Viper was technically discontinued in 2017. Okay. All so, right. yeah. Hmm. I wish they'd do it again. I, I can see where you're coming from, but uh, I don't. Okay, here's a question. <laughs> you're gonna hate this <laughs> <laughs> hate me what you got do you wish they'd make an ev viper 
No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they're going to make an EV Viper? No. Really? I don't think they will. I think once it's dead, it's dead because all the people that like it will have been dead too. I would have told you that about a Mustang. You don't. You dare call the Mustang Maki a Mustang? Does it have the badge? <laughs> Falsely. <laughs> I mean, the badge is the badge. Like, Fraudulently, yes. Okay. They did put a fraudulent Mustang badge. Okay. On. Dodge comes out with an SUV tomorrow that has the Viper badge stuck on the front of it, and it's an EV. What do you do? I'll, I, I stick my head in the sand. <laughs> It's the same situation. It's going to happen. They're going to go Stop back to Stop putting muscle chips. car and sports car badges on things that are very much not muscle cars and sports cars. I totally agree with you. The Mustang Mach-E is not a Mustang. Mm. Like the Mach 1 that we just looked at. That's a Mustang. Mustang. That's a Mustang. Yes. The mach is not. But like when you're in this situation where you got to transition or something, you go back on your roots. You call it the Dodge Green, Green Machine. <laughs> what the <laughs> Don't call it the Dodge Viper E. I have a suspicion a sneaky i don't know anything internally but i have a sneaky suspicion that we might get some sort of ev dodge probably viper. not an ev viper but an ev challenger i bet oh for sure i mean i just hope they don't do an ev viper it'll happen i, I no one's gonna like it but it'll happen yeah oh, <laughs> that's dumb but yeah that's my wish they would have do you have one i do what you got so uh i wish uh originally we were talking about these um and I wish, you, you actually said, I wish that they would put dash cams <laughs> in cars, yeah. like out, out of the factory. Yeah, not that you have to install, but you just get one. No. And uh, my parents heard trash cans, <laughs> and I actually really like that one a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were coming up with ideas of like, what are our, I wish they would have, what I wish they would put a dash cam, and then that's not what was overheard. No. Um, and I think the trash can is probably more practical and also would be awesome. Because if there was a designated trash can in a car, that's a great freaking idea. <laughs> you know this and I know this. I think every lady out there I might get in a lot of trouble soon. <laughs> Careful. For saying you're, this. You're going to dig yourself into a deep pile I of shit. I might here. be Careful. doing that. I think every lady out there uses the passenger seat as the trash can. I don't know why. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're doomed. <laughs> yes. We're dead now. So. Every time I try to get in the passenger seat of my wife's car, it's, y- yeah. Just that's fishing the, things out and moving things around. That's the locker room. I don't know why, but it is. The, the place that my wife really likes to put things is in the passenger footwell, more specifically. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. I can sit, but I have to chop my legs off. Mm-hmm. That they have to just come clean off. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you have the friend where, you know, there's all the water bottles and like junk in there too. And yes. You have to go sit in there and like sift your way through that to yes, find like, the bottom. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Yeah. And if it's real bad, you just sit in there and find a little spot where you can put your feet and just don't move. Oh, yeah. We've all been in that situation. Yeah. It's, where you just terrible. like shuffle your way in and you're right. just like, <laughs> okay, I'm here. Let's get to our destination now. Please. ASAP. Hurry. Yes. Yes. <laughs> No, I can tell you, me and you don't do that. Our our cars are fairly clean, but we're car guys. Yeah, yeah no. Right? They, oh, yeah, my car does not look like a trash pit. No, the exterior of my car is a little dirty, but that's different than the interior. That's because you also don't like to wash your car. I haven't washed it in a long time. <laughs> do you know how to wash your car? Jim? I do. Do you? Do you have car washing equipment? I do. Then why don't you wash your car, Derek? I, I don't know. Anyway. I do wish that there was a trash can in the car because that would be very fitting, right? Even us, us guys who like cars, sometimes you do have something and you're like, I do wish I could put this somewhere. Yes, because you're driving and you're hungry and like, I'm hungry. Let me have this granola bar. Sure. And then what do you do with the granola bar wrapper? Well, I don't know. What, do you put it in the cup holder and like... So I'll tell you what I do with it. Okay. And then I'll tell you what other people do with it. Mm-hmm. I stick it in my pocket so that way when I exit my vehicle, I can find a trash receptacle to dispose of my waste. Of which there should be one in your car. Well, that would make sense. Yes. But other people just go, pew, wherever it lands is where it lands. Oh, yes. Certainly. And you know it still has all the crumbs in there. Oh, yes. And it's terrible. Oh, yes. No, I generally will put it in the cup holder. And the cup holders come out of my car. So if there are crumbs in there, it's a very easy. You can just take it out. And do- yep. Do- yeah, yep. Wash it out. That's fine. No problem. Um, but yeah, I wish I wish they had trash cans built into cars. And they don't right now. And I don't know why they don't. That is a good idea. Yeah. So what do you have? Mine was I wish they brought the Viper back. 
Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> You're getting old now. I am. Yes. You, I'll we'll, join we'll, you with the Cadillac. Yes. We'll, <laughs> we'll put a trash can in your Cadillac. Okay. All yes, right. Deal. Cadillac. Cadillac <laughs> crew. All right. So do you have anything else for us on episode 45, Derek? Uh, I don't think I do. All right. So then that's going to wrap us up. Thank you so much for watching and listening to episode 45. Please make sure you leave us a five-star rating and drop a comment or a review on our Apple podcast or wherever you listen. Also, hit that subscribe button on YouTube and uh, give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment if you could. would be so grateful for that. And if you can, send us your I wish they would have or any of your auto-related news or anything you'd like to hear us chat about. may even mention you on air. So again, thank you so much for listening and watching to episode 45. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.